Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we're talking with Beppy. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today. Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to getting to, to pick your brain a little bit and seeing kind of just what makes you tick. But for those who are new, can you give a little intro about yourself? Yes, uh, I'm a musician from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I specialize in children's music. So I've created, I've got my sixth full-length album coming out right away, and uh, my music is pretty eclectic. It's pretty fun. Okay. What uh, what got you into music at, at the start of your music journey? Okay, so my music journey started when I was just like a little tiny babe. I was like four or five years old. Um, and I started taking keyboard lessons. And then I started learning the organ, which was really cool when I was young, the, the electric organ. Mm. Um, and then as I started to do lessons more and more, and I got more involved in music, um, when I graduated high school, I started teaching music. Um, and then in university, I started learning music um, and I did a degree in pipe organ okay. <laughs> and singing lessons. Um, but then I started teaching really, really little kids uh, in preschool music classes. And I think that's where um, this whole journey for children's music started was just making music specifically to teach certain musical concepts. So the songs would teach the skills, the songs would teach the movements, the songs would teach the elements of music that I was trying to teach. And I would design those for different age groups. So that was really fun. And now I write songs about space tomatoes and butts. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with some of those yeah. concepts, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you can't. I have a lot of fun. I get to follow a lot of uh, a lot of my really crazy ideas down some pretty crazy paths. So, mm -hmm. so what when you're putting together music like what's what's your inspiration where do you draw like the ideas for your songs for when it comes to children's music i suspect that i never really fully grew up um so i'm basically just a kid in an adult body trying to make it through the world <laughs> <laughs> but i have three kids um and we have a lot of fun together i draw on my own experiences as a human and my um, experiences in connecting with my kids and my my students that I teach so there's all these little areas that I draw ideas from um, but just life you know just living life just seeing kids and hanging out with kids you get some pretty fun ideas mm -hmm, I would imagine so so do you bounce ideas off of your kids to see if something's gonna stick like how, how do you figure something's gonna work out as a song I definitely start, um, I do two things, my poor kids, you know, I, I bounce ideas off of them after they've been kind of turned into songs. Sometimes the ideas start with my kids, like we play board games and when somebody's taking too long to have their turn, I wrote a song for that moment <laughs> in time, because of course, why would you not have a song for that moment? Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, um, once I've written a song, I kind of bring it home and sing it with my kids and my students and test it out and see if it works. Um, so there's both sides of that. The creation side of the song kind of starts from them. I remember one time my son brought home a tomato plant that he planted it from a seed that had been launched into space. And so okay. their class at school was like planting these tomato seeds and half of the seeds were launched to space and half of them weren't. And he got one that had gone to space. So our whole experiment that summer was, is it going to grow? Are these tomatoes going to have tentacles? Are they going to be purple? Are they going to? And so we, I ended up writing a song that just follows that whole journey called Ferb the Space Tomato. Um, and it was just what we speculated about this little tomato seedling and kind of what he went through on his journey to space. And then he came back. So um, lots of ideas come from my kids' lives as well mm -hmm. so it's pretty fun it gets weird yeah <laughs> i mean it, it sounds like just just a fun experience all around though because you can just have everyone kind of doing the same thing and getting ideas from everyone and all that stuff yeah. oh absolutely my house is uh my husband said to me the other day um well, i asked him do you think it's normal that we break out into song like our house is like a musical theater in <laughs> in action just like people just start singing and we start singing moments and feelings and things come out. And I, I do wonder sometimes if that's happening in any other houses or if it's just my house with my kids and we just break out into song all the time. I mean, yeah. it's, it's an experience. That's for sure. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. 
So you have a new single you, I believe you just released. It's called Reset. Can you give me mm -hmm. a story behind that one? Absolutely. Uh, it's just about resetting. It's about, I guess, trying to realize that you need to reset. And I think that that's a conversation that I've had with my kids a lot of times. Just like, okay, let's take a break. Let's take a minute. Let's have a snack. Let's walk away. Homework is a big one, right? Like they're getting mm -hmm. frustrated with their homework and they can't get it done. And they, they just, but they want to get it done. But sometimes our brain is like, mm -mm, this isn't going to work. So reset is about saying it's normal to need a break. It's normal to reset. And if you start noticing that your thoughts are getting really negative, or you know that you're just caught up on something that shouldn't be this hard, but it's really hard today for whatever reason, then we need a reset. Uh, so that song is a soundtrack now. Um, and whenever my kids are getting, you know, overwhelmed or they're feeling like they can't go on or finish the task at hand, I'll just hit play. And they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I need, I need to just reset. I'm okay. I'm not broken. Mm -hmm. I just need a minute to reset. And so it's basically an anthem for moments like that, that even as an adult, I have moments like that every day, you know? I think we all do, to be honest. I know I have several of those. Yeah, but it's hard. Sometimes we get caught up in in the task and the priority seems to lie on the task and not on how we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to shift that narrative that no, the priority should always be you. Are you okay? What do you need? Do you have what you need? Because if we're not taking care of our mental health, if we're not taking care of our bodies, then we can't get the task done anyway. We need to, we need to make our priorities a little bit different, I think. Yeah. For sure. I, I definitely think that's a, that's a big thing that a lot of people need to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So your music itself is not what you would call this, the typical children's music with the happy go lucky sounds and songs. What, what was the idea behind how you created that? I mean, you have the, the stories behind it, but you have more of a, an eclectic sound to your music. Oh yeah. I would agree with that. Um, the, the styles, the genres that I use in my music, my producer and I, um, Justin McDonough, we write all of the music together. Um, and we basically write songs that we would want to listen to, but then we incorporate themes that are really targeted towards connecting with kids. Mm -hmm. So it's the music that we would want to hear. It's music that we love. It's, it's our, it's our, Basically, our diverse musical tastes are kind of interwoven into the albums. We do play around with a lot of different styles and vibes. Um, but it's really important to us that the music sounds really good. And we weren't really interested in doing nursery rhymes or doing stuff that's already been done. Um, I also noticed that my kids just really love, like, you know, they love Britney Spears and they love the Arkells and they love all these bands that are just on the radio Mm -hmm. Because why, why would we need to specifically curate music to be a certain way just for kids? Why can't kids have that music too? So we thought, you know, we'll just give them the stuff that they love, but we'll incorporate some themes that they can really connect to instead of that adult content and the adult themes. We just gave them some stuff that they can really draw from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but. It does. So I have a, a one and a half year old daughter now and watching all those nursery rhyme songs on YouTube and stuff makes me want to like gouge out my own eyes sometimes. <laughs> so listening to your music was a little bit more refreshing and going, oh, OK, like this is you you get the story, you get everything you need, but it actually has that more of a drawing interest for for everyone, really. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And that doesn't mean to say that those nursery rhymes aren't really loved and enjoyed and treasured, you know, they do have a place. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't have a passion for doing that kind of stuff. I wanted to do something a little bit more, I guess, innovative or modern. I know there's a lot of children's artists that are doing that now too, right? They're writing the rock songs and the pop songs for kids. And, and that's more what I'm drawn to is just pushing myself musically while connecting with the kids in terms of the lyrics and the content. Mm -hmm. So speaking of musically, this is a question I ask most people, and I think you might have an interesting, you know, thought process behind it is how do you think your music has evolved over, over the years from early releases until now? I mean, a kids, I don't know how that even works with kids music. Yeah. Um, I think I'm not 
an exception in terms of this journey. I think that regardless of the genre that you're participating in, if you keep traveling down, if you keep releasing content and making more and more music, you're going to change, you're going to evolve. Um, but I'm always very interested in, in pushing myself. So, you know, trying something new. We wrote a, a heavy metal song on one of our albums called Walk With Me. And it's a heavy metal song about making a stir fry. <laughs> 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 and it's super fun but I had to push myself out of my comfort zone um because I'm a classically trained vocalist so doing the heavy metal styles doing the punk rock styles doing the really cool funk and disco styles and pop um all of that is pushing myself to do new things and become this really um I guess diverse vocalist um so I came into this journey just having, you know, maybe two or three dimensions that I could draw from as a vocalist. And now I feel like I could probably try anything at least, you know, and see what I could do. And I noticed for myself, my range has grown. My confidence has grown. My willingness to do crazy stuff has grown. Um, and so we're always adding more and trying to push more and do more on this particular album. We invested a lot into the production side of things. Um, we spent more time there, you know, than we we would normally do. And we we did live drums on on a lot of the tracks. And um, I think that that's how we're also growing my team and I. Just like, okay, we're going to try to do this in a better way, in a more in depth way. We're going to really make sure that all of those la layers are there. We're going to collaborate a little bit more. So we're always we're always growing, I guess, in in all aspects of the music. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's important because it helps everyone kind of stay with you and follow your growth. Yeah, I think so. And, and if you look back at my first album and compare it to this album that I'm releasing now, I can really tell that I'm brave mm -hmm. <laughs> and doing some taking some more risks. So that's really fun to see. For sure. How do you stay grounded outside of music? I mean, it's pretty probably a pretty busy job that you have going on with it so what do you do to stay you know keep yourself level oh uh, that's a good question I, I think that it's important to um step away from the work side of it um if it becomes too much if the pressure gets too big if you put too many goals on yourself then you don't enjoy it as much mm -hmm. um and for me the music I mean I have a I work at a university full time. So the music is my passion project outside of my job. And then I've got my kids and there's always these, everybody has these multiple facets of their life. Right. But if we spend too much time making that work, then we lose the element of play and creativity and fun and joy. So it's important for me to take a step back from the work side of it and just enjoy and consume art as an artist and just go enjoy that with my family and my kids. And I really love to travel. We just got back from a three week trip to Australia where I got to perform oh. there too. So that was pretty cool. So we spent a lot of time traveling my family and I. Yeah, that sounds fun. Like I, my problem is stepping back from the work also because with with hidden beats, I think I have thirty people under under hidden beats now. So it's it's its own monster now. <laughs> That's a lot. Well done. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's interesting because this like interviews like this started during COVID because mm -hmm. we we're actually live live event coverage is what we typically do. So you know, photo video for concerts, things like that, and. And it just, this blew up into its own monster also. So there's always too much to go on the go at once. Oh yeah. There's never a shortage of things to do. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is, this is interview one of six I have this week alone. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. It gets, it can get overwhelming. And then, and then it's, it's easy to lose sight of the why. And I think that when that starts to happen for me that I know I'm, I'm working too much, you mm -hmm. know, um, when I realize, Oh no, I, I love this. This is what I want to do. If, if I think about my life without it, I feel empty and sad. So I definitely know that it's part of my life, but it can't encompass my whole life. For sure. Have you ever thought of like what a collaboration would be like with some of the other artists out there doing children's content? Like there's, um, 
walk off the earth. There's some Romeo is doing Romeo eats. There's Jeremy Fisher doing different things. Yeah. And both of those groups um, were nominated with me at the most recent Juno awards, uh, mm -hmm. not in 2024, but 2020, not this year that just happened, but a year ago. Um, and it was pretty cool to, to see them. I never got to meet walk off the earth. Uh, but they did win and that was pretty cool. And their music is really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I always want to do the collaborations and I'm really open to doing collaborations. And if it's something that's organic and it just kind of happens, then it tends to work out. Um, but at the same time, it's really hard to make those things uh, happen. So they, I haven't done a lot of collaborations. I've done some songwriting with some other artists. I wrote a song with Will's Jams. I don't know if you've heard of Will. I know the name, yeah. Yeah, he's um, he's a, a BC-based artist, and he's great. Um, and so I've started to do some of that songwriting stuff, and then I think that those are just little seeds that you kind of plant, and then they kind of grow into something else and change and evolve. Mm -hmm. um, but they're harder to predict and they're harder to control. So um, I end up, you know, focusing on my own albums and then releasing them. And then these little collaborations end up being side projects outside of the scope of the albums. But um, I'm always really open to doing collaborations. Um, and I would love to see, I, I've tried to do some collaborations with um, some artists. I won't name any names. <laughs> <laughs> but because they haven't come through yet, but I'm still trying, I'm still trying to get them to happen. So we'll see, we'll see what the future brings. Well, we'll, we'll make sure to tag, you know, the Romeo Eats crew and, and Jeremy yeah. in this because <laughs> I've actually had the chance to talk to both of them before. So nice. we'll see if we can we'll add push that along a bit for you. Yeah, let them know that I'm fun. <laughs> <laughs> so every interview, especially on first times, I get I always ask some fun questions a little bit. Okay, let's do it pick your brain a bit first one is my favorite one what's one thing you think should be asked more in an interview that's not asked enough oh my goodness this one always makes everyone think the most yeah because there's the typical what advice would you give to your younger self and um what advice would you give to other artists I always really enjoy those ones um but I think if it's just pure fun I would say, oh, I don't know. Maybe I would really enjoy it if somebody asked me something about, you know, what I like to do in my free time or what I like to do if I had free time. I don't have free time, <laughs> but if I had free time, what I would mm -hmm. do and what I enjoy doing. Um, maybe something silly like, what's your favorite? show or movie or something like that nobody ever asks stuff like that nobody yeah, asks stuff about the music yeah yeah you have to ask the cookie cutter ones at the start but i always try to yeah. mix it up a little bit at the end so speaking yeah. of movies then who plays you in the movie of your life oh that is a fun <laughs> question mm -hmm. that is a really fun question oh i don't know somebody that's weird <laughs> and that can sing i don't know i have no idea actually well, that's gonna I'll be what you have to think about for sure i'm gonna have to think about it yeah mm -hmm. now this one's interesting and i'm curious what you think is the hardest part about the music industry and kind of getting yourself out there yeah this one is um i would say the the digitization of the music industry because I started making music in uh, the late 90s. And that's when we still had CD players. Mm -hmm. um, and I released one adult contemporary album. Um, and it was just all CDs. And very quickly after that, you know, then there was the evolution of uh, the iPod and the Napster and LimeWire and all those streaming services started to really, really quickly shift the landscape that we're all navigating. Mm -hmm. So being able to monetize your art to try to make a living when, you know, you're making fractions of a penny from a stream, I would say that that was, the, 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 this is the biggest challenge is that you can't just release music and sell it. You have to release music and then become a merchandise expert, a social media expert, 
um, let's hope that you're touring because if you're not touring, you're not making any money. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think navigating that has been the biggest challenge. And it wasn't until I started working, um, on a bigger scale and was able to bring in team members. And I signed with platoon, which is a division of Apple music. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm starting to see some success in these areas now because I have some support. So as an independent artist trying to navigate that, it's really hard to break in on your own. Yeah. That's a huge landscape. You have to be a business now. You're not just a musician anymore. No, nope, You have to do it all. Mm -hmm. Now fun ones, I think, because you're a fan of music. I'm curious who's on your go-to playlist that people might not expect you listen to. Oh, that's a really good question. I have a really crazy uh, music taste. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that meme where it's like, it shows like a dark Gothic castle and it says my music taste. And then it shows like a beautiful, like prairie garden with spring flowers. Also my music taste. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it ranges from, from a whole bunch of different bands, but I really like, um, when I was growing up, I really like Incubus and Pearl Jam and Tragically Hip and, um, I really like the Foo Fighters and, and stuff like that. But then on the other side of it, I really love Doja Cat and Lizzo and so oh. Taylor Swift. And so I've got like this really cool mix and like everything in between. And I think I really, really love, um, like there's a local band Vertigo that I really love. And there, I really love local bands, um, Mallory Chipman. I love her music. So um, I'm open to listening to anything. Yeah, a good song is a good song, no matter where Facts. it comes from, really. Facts. My next question was actually going to be, who are some of the local people that you're listening to? But since you just named a few, is there anyone else you want to add to the list? Oh, my husband and I are obsessed with the Arkells lately. Mm -hmm. um, we really, really love them. Scenic Route to Alaska um, and Carter and the Capitals. I don't know if you've heard of Carter and the Capitals. Name sounds familiar. I might've seen it in an email. So good. And Kaylee Cardinal, who's playing at uh, the Windspear coming up uh, or the Jubilee with the ESO. Okay. Uh, she's amazing. Kaylee Cardinal, look her up. Mm -hmm. What would be your favorite concert you've ever attended as a music fan? My favorite concert... This I go to a, so many concerts, so um, this is a really hard question. Mm -hmm. I think the most epic one was when I was in my early 20s. I, I traveled around the UK and I got a job as a beer tub girl Okay. <laughs> for Heineken at Slane Castle in, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, they had a big concert there and I got to see... Foo Fighters, Queens of the Stone Age, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers all in one night. And it was wow. very epic. It's etched core memory. Yeah, I would say so. That's a that's a pretty sweet lineup for sure. That was amazing. Yeah. Nice. Now, if you had to introduce your music to someone for the very first time, brand new fan, what's the first song they have to listen to? I would say listen to Larry and Joe. Okay. It's, it's my most streamed song, um, but it, it encompasses my personality pretty good. It's goofy. It's about these two dinosaurs, but the, the music is bopping. It's got a good dance that you can follow along. Your kids will get into it right away. Okay. I, I like that one because it's like the favorite child question. That, how can you pick the best one out of everyone? <laughs> yeah. It's tough though, because my music is very different. So if you were to listen to my top five songs you'd be like oh this is all the same artist i think you'd be like wow this is mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a journey this is a really crazy journey and i think that's the best part about music is the journey behind it yeah now last two most important questions what do you hope people take away from your music i've always tried really hard to write music that is meaningful for young listeners. Um, and I really work hard to try to create that connection. So I've been told that I speak kid, that I can somehow speak the language of, of kids and that they, they get it, you know, they dive into the music and 
I have this one song called that used to be our house and it's about like moving and that you're really attached and you've never lived anywhere else and you're little and this is really confusing that you're moving into a new house so it's like this blink 182 kind of vibe and it's epic and it's you know um but I had a mom come up to me after a show one time and she was like, we were listening to that song and we had just moved and she was crying because she was processing all of the emotions about, about moving. So, um, yeah, I would say that that's, that's it. Just trying to connect in those moments where kids might need to be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, that's a good thing to, to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And last one is what motivates you to keep walking this musical path? That's a really good question because <laughs> I keep getting older and older. Um, but this music keeps me young. It keeps me, I guess, grounded to what's really important in life. Um, and I know that it's hard for some people to understand this music is the they think kids music and I think kids music gets the stereotype that it is Mary had a little lamb and twinkle twinkle little star but mm -hmm. it's actually just about staying in in tune with the really important things in life which are you know well-being and relationships and and movement and and love and kindness and acceptance and all of these really important things that we I think as adults, we kind of lose touch with. So uh, it keeps me young. And it also is this really cool pathway for me personally to express all angles of my creativity. So I get to be, you know, I say that my music is eclectic. And I think that that's really true because it doesn't follow any rules. It doesn't follow rules of genre or style or length or, you know, what topics you're going to tackle. Um, so I get to really just dive in and see where it takes me and, and be super creative and push limits and boundaries. So I am drawn to that, you know, I think as an artist, I'm drawn to this blank canvas that this genre has given me. Um, and I really, really love kids. So um, I don't think that'll change. I think as long as those things are there, as long as this continues to be a blank canvas for me to be creative and connect and stay grounded to what's really important and hang out with kids, I'll probably keep doing it. I mean, that sounds pretty fun. And I, I'd certainly enjoy, you know, hanging out with my daughter when she's crawling all over me and being crazy. So I get, I get that feeling for sure. Yeah. Kids give us perspective. Hey. Oh, change change of life for sure it was a it was a completely mind altering thing but yeah that's all i have written down here is you know any final words of wisdom you'd like to leave to people i think just you know stay young stay open stay open to new things i think that you'd be surprised that you'll probably like my kids music even if you're not a kid mm -hmm. kids music for adults Kids music. <laughs> My producer says it's music for kids and for grownups who forgot that they're not still kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still <laughs> feel like I'm a kid sometimes until my body tells me you're not. <laughs> yeah, the body can be a stark reminder <laughs> of Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it tells me every morning when I wake up, and then every day when I get up from this desk, it's it reminds me. With the creaking and the cracking, and there's new noises everywhere. But mm -hmm. yeah. I've done some some stupid things in my time too. So I've got a few extra creaks and cracks. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, so it was delightful to to get to to learn about you, about your music. And you've definitely made a new fan in me because when I saw, you know, children's music come across my desk in my email, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was actually a delightful, a delightful kind of new thing to hear for sure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing your time and space with me today. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing more that comes from you. And, and I hope we get to do this again, because it's nice to catch up with people as we walk down this road that we are on. When album number seven comes out, let's do it. I'm, I'm always here. So you feel free to hit me up anytime. Sounds good. Thanks, Tom. All right. I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now.